Managing usernames and passwords can be a real pain. And let's be honest, it's also a bit risky. With Google OAuth, we can skip all that hassle and let users sign in with their Google accounts. That way, we don't need to store passwords or deal with sensitive login data. We just ask for the bits of user info we actually need, like their email or basic profile, and Google handles the rest. In this quick video, we're going to walk through how to set up Google login for a Python app using the AuthLib library. We're using Flask here, but you can totally adapt the same steps for other web frameworks too. All right, first things first, we need to head over to the Google Cloud Console. Don't worry, we've got the link for you in the blog post that goes along with this video. Once you're there, you'll need to log in with your Google Cloud account. I'm already signed in, so we're good to go. Next up, we need to choose a project. So at the top of the page, go ahead and click where it says select a project. If you already have one, you can just pick it from the list. Otherwise, let's create a new one. I'm going to name mine something like Auth Project. You can call yours whatever makes sense. Once you've got the name, let's hit that Create button and move on. Once the project is created, we need to make sure it's selected. So again, I'll click on Select a Project and choose the one we just made. You should see the project name appear up at the top once it's active. Now, from the navigation menu on the left, let's go ahead and click on APIs and Services and then head over to the OAuth Consent screen. Let's click on Get Started. And the first thing we need to do is give our app a name. I'm calling mine Auth Example App, but you can name it whatever you like. We'll also need to provide a support email. Once that's done, we click Next to move on to the Audience section. Here, we'll choose External. That way, anyone with a Google account can log into our app. I'll go ahead and enter my email again, and then we just need to agree to the terms and conditions. After that, we're ready to create the app. Now it's time to create an OAuth client. First, we choose the application type. I'm going with web application for this one. Then we give the client a name. I'll call mine something simple like OAuth client. Next up, we need to set the authorized JavaScript origins. This is just the domain where our Python app is running. Since I'm starting locally, I'll use the IP address 127.0.0.1. And don't forget the port. Flask uses port 5000 by default, so that's what I'm putting here. I'll just copy that over and paste it into the field. But if you're using a different setup or a different port, make sure to adjust it accordingly. Next up, we've got the authorized redirect URIs. Just like before, we need to add a URI, but this time it's a bit more specific. Instead of just the domain, we need to provide the exact URL that Google should redirect the user to after a successful login. It has to be on the same domain we entered earlier. And in my case, I'm going to use something like slash authorize. You can use a different path if you want. What really matters is that whatever you put here, you'll need to match it exactly in your Python server when you set up your login route. Now we just scroll down and click on create. And there it is. Our client has been created. You'll see the client ID right here, and we can copy it now, though we'll also have access to it later if we need it. I'll just click OK to close this window. Next, we switch over to the Data Access tab, and then click on Add or Remove Scopes. I'm going to select the first three, Email, Profile, and Open ID. That should cover most use cases, but feel free to adjust based on what your app actually needs. Once we're done selecting the scopes, we scroll down and click on Update. Then we scroll down again and hit Save. All right, now I'm opening up Visual Studio Code, and we need to open the folder where we want to set up our Python server. I'm already in the folder I want to use, so no need to switch directories. And if you're planning to use a Python virtual environment, this is the perfect time to create it and activate it. Mine's already set up and activated, so I'm good to go. Now we need to install the required pip packages. We're going to use Flask and AuthLib. Flask is our web server, of course, and AuthLib is the package that connects our server to the authentication provider. In our case, that's Google. So let's go ahead and run the install command. Once that's done, the packages are installed and ready to go. 
Now I'll copy the code for the server and paste it into a new file called server.py. We need to update the client ID and client secret. So let's start by copying the client ID. We switch over to the client tab, open up our authentication client, and from there, I can grab the client ID. Back in Visual Studio Code, I'll paste it in. And now let's do the same for the client secret, copy it from the same spot, and paste it into our code. One more thing we need to double check is the authorized route. This is the path Google will redirect to after a successful login. In my case, it's called authorized. And if we look back at the Google Cloud Console, we can see that matches the authorized redirect URI we set earlier. All that's left now is to start our server. We can do that by running the command Python server.py. Once it's running, we'll see the link to our new server. Let's go ahead and follow that. And there it is, the home page of our brand new Flask app. Since the home page includes a link to the login page, that's what we're seeing here. Now, when we click on login, it triggers the login function we set up earlier, which uses Google's OAuth server to handle the sign in. So let's go ahead and click the link and see it in action. As you can see, we're now being asked to choose a Google account to log in with. I'll go ahead and select mine. Google lets us know that it's going to share our name, email address, and profile picture with the app. And that's because those are the details we requested when we set everything up. So now I'll approve access for this new application. And just like that, we're redirected to the Authorize page, which is now displaying information pulled directly from my Google account.